Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. So today we are going to do another medium level problem from lead code. The problem number is 442. Find all duplicates in an array. So given an array of integers between 1 to less than n, where n is the size of the array, some elements appear twice and others appear once. Find all the elements that appear twice in this array. Okay. So could you do it without extra space and in order of n runtime? Okay. So here is a problem, here is an uh, example that we see over here that we have been given with 432 to, um, uh, 4327-8231 wherein we can see this number 2 has been repeated twice and uh, this number 3 is also repeated twice. So we should return 2 and 3 in array. So this is the problem all about. So as I always uh, recommend to give it a try yourself and uh, then um, you can continue watching my solution. The problem uh, can be solved very easily in order of uh, n uh, uh, runtime but the difficulty lies in extra space right so uh, uh, let's head over to the board and let's check out the solution on how to approach this kind of problem and to find out all the relevant points that we can get from this problem so over to the board so we have taken the same example from the lead code wherein we have 4327823231 and we have the output 2 and 3 so 2 and 3 are the elements that's being repeated over here <laughs> So if we don't consider this part of the problem, right, wherein they have said that you should not use any extra space and do it in order of n runtime, then the problem becomes very easy, right? Probably one one easy solution could be I could uh, create a map of integer and integer, and uh, for each of the value I can maintain the count, right? And uh, wherever the count is greater than uh, one, I can return those uh, those values, right? There can be several other ways. Uh, that you can use in order to solve this kind of problem. It becomes very tricky when they say that uh, you have to have uh, order of n runtime and uh, constant space. So these are the two constraints that have been given to us in order to come up with the most optimal solution. So let's understand the problem first. So often what you will see that your problem contains enough hints that you can capitalize on when you try to solve a problem. So if you look at this problem statement given to us, you will see that there are there are plenty of hints hidden inside the problem statement. So you need to identify that. And once you identify that, it really becomes easy for you. So let's, uh, let's look into the problem statement again and see what are the hints we are talking about. So the first thing the problem is giving us is that uh, the element of the array, the values present in the array is between 1 to n, both inclusive right where n is the size of the array so this is one very big hint that we have in this problem so what does this imply so let's understand this in a little more details so let's say uh, n is 5 right so when n is 5 what are the possible values it can have it can have 1 2 3 4 and 5 right so the, the values are in this range so this is my range and there is no deviation to it right so it's going to remain in this range okay so these are the range of values so now the second part when we have n equals to 5 then what are the range of indexes the indexes can be between 0 1 2 3 and 4 so this is my range of index so you see that if i subtract one from each each one of them if i subtract one from each one of them then what i end up is nothing but this what this become is this right so we are going to capitalize on that, right? And now coming to the second hint. So they are telling me here we can have multiple answers, right? Like we, we have seen over here, two and three. So over here, they're clearly telling me that without using any extra space, what this implies is basically that we are going to modify the actual input that's being passed to us, right? Now let's look at this example that we have taken earlier and see how it can be broken down, right? So let, let's say this is my array, which is denoted by a A. So what are we going to do? We are basically going to iterate this entire array one. So we, we have been told that uh, what we are looking for is an order of n runtime complexity, right? So we can go over this array once. So let's say I iterate this array. So let's go over this array once. So for each of the element that I get, so when I get a four, so when I get a four, what I can definitely say is that based on this minus one theory that we have established over here that the that the index pointed by this element say ai is nothing but ai minus one so for four 
what it means is this point. Uh, so let me put down the index first. This is. So what does this four denotes? Four is mapped to index three. Three is mapped to index two minus one, three minus one. Two <coughs> is mapped to index one. Two minus one is one. Seven is mapped to index six. Eight is mapped to index seven. This two over here, let me put it with a different color. Let me use a red color in this uh, case. So this two, which is a duplicate, is pointing to the same index, right? Then I have a three, which is pointing to index two. So let me mark this with another red color. And then we have a one. One is uh, mapping to index zero. Okay, so just just try to visualize that what we are doing is we are using the value at the uh, particular index, doing a minus one and visiting it. So now you see that we have couple of uh, indexes in the red color and they have multiple items coming to them. So how do we identify these things? How do we segregate that it's been visited previously? I cannot delete the value. So what else I can do? So let me put the array once again. So let's say I, IDX is four minus one, that is three. So I am talking about I equals to zero over here and IDX is the value minus one. Okay. So we have a three. Okay. So what we are going to do, let me put the index again for you. And also let me put the formula for IDX. So let's say, let's say we'll modify it later. I'm uh, not going to change now. So let's say E of I minus one we are doing, right? So let this be the formula for the moment. We'll see that we need some modification over here. So let's not go into that. So what is happening is we are talking about the index three. So zero at index has a mark to the third index. So in the third index, what we can easily do is we we have a seven and we need the we need the seven. We are going to need the seven. But what we'll do is basically just strike it off and we'll put a minus sign to it. That's it, a minus sign. So now what will happen is the loop will go on. The i will come to one. Going by the IDX formula, which what will happen is we'll get a three minus one. The value is three over here. So three minus one, that is two. So in the second index, whatever value is present, we are going to remove it and put a minus two. So we're just going to multiply it by minus one, nothing else. Okay. So moving on, I moves to two. We have a value of two, two minus one, which is a one. Okay. So what we are going to do over here is we go to the first index, remove the three, put a minus three. Okay. These are all separate values, definitely. Okay. Then I moves on, I goes to three. That means seven minus one which is six at the sixth index. What we are going to do is we are going to go and do the same thing. We do a minus three. So far, so good. Moves on. I goes to four. Fourth has a value of eight. So eight minus one, we get a seven. In the seventh index, we have a mine. Uh, we have a one. We change that to minus one. Let me get some space for you over here. I moves to five. Okay. So on the fifth index, we have a value two minus one. We get a one. Now you see that we never got a negative value, right? We never got a negative value, but currently the value over here is a negative value. That implies that somebody has previously some, someone from the other index has came to this in uh, this uh, uh, first index and has updated the value. This means this two is, is surely going to be a duplicate element. So we put this two as a duplicate element. Okay, we don't update, we don't change, we don't do the multiply anymore. So we move on, we, i goes to six. And at i goes to six, what I get a value of three, three minus one, we get a value of two. 
so what happens now i go to the second index and i see that the value over there is again a negative value right that means somebody has came to this index from some other value so you can see here that it has come, it has came from here so this three is also a duplicate element right so you can see here that how it is easily distinguishing the duplicate elements every time it's getting um, a duplicate element in the future right then it goes to one one minus one is a zero we come here and we just do a update of the value so you see here that how these two elements has been identified so easily so if you notice carefully what we have considered over here is a one right not a minus one but the value at that time was a minus one but we have considered it as a one same goes for this three over here as well we have considered it as a three not as a minus three had it been minus three the result wouldn't have been two had it been minus one the result wouldn't have been zero right so we are dropping this negative sign when we are con considering it for the index right so we are going to do a abs that's why i have kept the space over here so it we are going to use the abs function so that even if the value is negative we are going to get only the uh, only, uh we are going to consume it as only the positive value so let's complete the algorithm over here so i'm just going to change this so what we'll be doing is basically we'll be doing abs of ai minus one so this will give me the index right and now what we are, we are going to see if a of idx is less than zero that means this has been visited right because the original value ranges between one to n right it cannot be less than zero so if it is less than zero that means somebody has came here previously from some other index and has updated this so we will add to duplicate so in this case we know this is a duplicate number right otherwise what we are going to do otherwise if it is a positive number that means this has not been visited earlier so we are just going to update the value whatever is there so a of idx we are going to put minus a of idx so first time i see a uh, see a positive value 2 i'm just going to change it to minus 2 so next time if from any other index i come here and see a value of minus 2 or uh, less than 0 uh, for that matter so we are going to say that this this is duplicate this is as simple as that so let's head over to the lead code and see how the solution looks so we need to have a list of integers that will contain all the duplicate results so let's call that the result because we are going to return that back at the end and we have an array list that we are going to return at the end so now what we are going to do is we are going to go over this nums we are just going to iterate over it and we are, every time we are going to go ahead and calculate using maps.abs the value pointed so n minus 1 now as as we have talked right the check is pretty simple if nums idx is less than zero what we are going to do is we are going to add, um, add to the result dot add so we are going to go ahead and put this idx so idx is the index right so to, to get the value the duplicate value we have to do a idx plus one right in order to get it otherwise if that's not the case what you can do is you can just say that nums idx equals to minus nums idx that's it yes so that's all that's all about um, this problem so let's run this code pretty simple code i hope i haven't made a mistake <laughs> i don't know i don't trust me yes i did it what is it math okay it has been accepted let's uh, do a submit and check for the broader range of test cases yes it's a pretty good uh, performance that you can see we haven't used any extra spaces so we have just manipulated the, the array that we have we haven't uh, really used any any extra spaces over here so yeah that is all from uh, this algorithm so do let me know what you think about this solution so this solution is a pretty simple solution which just operates on the index and uh, try to utilize the space that is already there in order to come up with the perfect solution so do let me know what you think about the video if you think the solution is helpful do give it a like do share and subscribe as well please uh, support the channel to grow 
uh, it's been a great journey to have 100 plus members in sh such a short time thanks to all of you once again and um, do let me know if you want me to solve any particular problem i could um, try to solve that from any platform or even even if you have any problem offline problem also i am fine with that do share i will try my best in order to come up with the solution so yeah that's all from this video have a great day thank you and uh, keep watching joy of life see you soon again see you guys bye bye